Hello, welcome to the Full Circle Podcast. This is the first one of the day of the world. Here, what's good, yo? It's your fucking boy, Buggy. Back with a podcast because I feel like fucking talking, yo. Um, it is February 20th, 2020, 1234. Whoa, that was the name of a mixtape I had back in the day. I never released it, though. But... I'm fucking here because, like I said, I just feel like fucking talking. I actually don't feel like talking, but I'm going to talk because that's when interesting thing come, things come out. You really dive in your fucking brain and you see what's what when you're fucking empty. It's a form of meditation to me doing these podcasts, yo. So who knows one day whoever's going to fucking listen to these. It might help. It might not. I don't know. It might might help you know me. Whatever. But, um, first things first, <clears throat> my mouth is dry as fuck. I hit the bubbler like 10 minutes ago and I just stopped coughing. I'm gonna go get some fucking water real quick and play a song. And we're back, and that song right there was Good Times by The Only Way. Shout out to The Only Way. (coughs) Jesus, I cannot stop fucking, like, my throat has been fucked from this hit. I don't know why. It's like a gnarly, I woke up not too long ago. I was up all fucking night for no reason. I hate when that shit happens. Especially the nights where, like, you don't feel like doing shit and you just want to go to sleep, but you lay down and you're just fucking staring. Try to fucking not do the addictive scrolling shit on YouTube or whatever. That doesn't work. So you wind up just being up for, like, three fucking more hours. And then when I realize the time I wasted, it's kind of like my life. I realized the time I wasted and I jumped up and made some music. And then before I knew it, it was fucking five, six in the morning. But, um, yeah, so, like I said, I'm here to just talk. If you listen to anything I do, I fucking love you. Hopefully we'll hug soon. But, um, first thing I want to talk about is, uh, is the new music I have on the way, yo. I've been, uh, very consistent with everything. Like I said in a couple podcasts ago, if you listened... I like these because it's kind of like month by month trailing my life and it's keeping the narrative of my story where I am mentally. And a couple months ago, I was obviously in a very, very low spot, but I decided to pull myself out. I consciously decided to start eating healthy. Like I I, I changed everything. Um, You can go back back to those podcasts if you want to hear those. But one of the main things that I had to fix for myself was discipline. I was always good with, like I just said, I realized I just scrolled for two hours last night, so I jumped up and made some music to make up for that time that I wasted. That's kind of a trending thing in my life. I'm a binge guy with whatever I do. So if I'm partying, I'm fucking raging. You know, if I'm making music, I'm trying to make like four or five songs. Like ask anybody I've had sessions with, like the second a song's done, I need to go to another one. Or if this person's taking too long, like for me, too long to write to the song, I have to get out of the room or put on a different beat. (coughs) Excuse me. I feel like Joey Diaz right now. Shout out to the church of what happened, you know. (coughs) He coughs like that every like fucking 30, 40 seconds. Jesus. Fucking, uh, but yeah, I've been dropping, <clears throat> dropping the music consistently. Like I, like I promised the discipline was a thing in my life that I wasn't good with. Like I said, I'm, I never had a problem with getting shit done when I wanted to do it because I, I can do things in bulk and, you know, but then when you do that, like I said, time, uh, time otherwise passes very fast and you realize you're rewarding yourself bit by bit, but 
I realized by this is like it never ends no matter what it is in life. Like every single day you got to put yourself through it. Like I'm making it a point to, to challenge myself physically every day. So I'm working out six days a week. I switched my whole diet up. I cheated bad the past like th- three days ago. I cheated for two, three days in a row. And and it, it's crazy how like – Because I was eating all, like, salmon and chicken and veggies and shit. And then the past three days I ate, like, pasta and pizza and just doughy shit. Donuts. You know, like, Valentine's Day I ate some cookies. And, dude, that shit had me hung over for, like, two, three days. Like, my body was dragging. So, physically in my body like that, Obviously, I I cleaned out my social media in the sense of, like, people posting negative shit, like, whatever the negative thing is. Clean that up. But I still find myself... Now I'm scrolling through happy shit, you know? So it's still... It's kind of a double-edged sword with whatever you're doing. So you have to be disciplined right in the middle with everything you do. So what I'm getting at is with my music... I made so much the past couple years, but didn't release any of it. A thing that I used to do was make a lot of music and drop it right when I made it. But the quality wasn't there. I found my quality niche like two years ago, two and a half years ago. So once that happened, that kind of made me want to delete everything that I put before that. But as an artist, I want people to see the progress in this, these transitions I've made musically. <clears throat> So, with the things that I dealt with a few months ago, with the loss and changing, trying to change my whole mental state of how I do shit, that's when, like, I decided, like, all right, on top of the eating and working out and treating, like, telling everyone I love them consistently, because, like, I, I, I tell myself that I do that, but I don't. Like I, I make it a point now to every day at least tell two, three people that I love them, that I haven't spoken to in a while because if it's someone that I'm obviously in normal conversations with, I tell them I love them consistently throughout the convo. But about two, three, three months ago was when I started dropping music every week. So I dropped an album December, which was Crossroads, an acoustic album that I fully produced. January, I dropped a lo-fi hip-hop album called Low Stock, and I produced half of it. And then this month, which it should be everywhere tonight or tomorrow, actually, it's called Have You Ever Loved Somebody, and that's another album. That's obviously some lovey-dovey shit, different vibes and trap styles and that. But next month, I have an album called Deep Stock, which is all Deep House, which is completely experimental, like the first one I dropped, which is Crossroads, an acoustic album where I'm singing a lot, I play piano, I do solos and synths, play the bass and all that in it. After Deep Stock, I'm thinking of doing a collab album at that time. I have about five to six collab albums on the way. Shout out to Prince Alexander, Mozzie, Kyle, Kyle Kaleidoscope. Dude, I have like a lot of dope shit. And those are pretty much EPs, like five, five to seven songs each. But... Those can be, those are going to be spread out through the months as well. I'm thinking of doing, connecting all the collabs and doing like two songs each and doing two separate ones. So instead of having like four EPs or like five EPs with the five separate artists, I would have two EPs mixed with all of them. Because the vibes, I'm finding my way to connect this completely different genre with this one in the album as far as flow goes not in a song but i'm getting there to like connecting it all in one song somehow but after them i by may uh may and june that's when i'm gonna release um this other i don't even have a title for it yet but it's just like it's my best work it's like real shit it's everything i've been dropping is inevitably intrap and like self selfish or what i don't know what the word i'm fucking looking for is like intro perspective i forgot fucking can't figure out that word (laughs) but all that shit is inevitably like that because of the self-reflection that i've been doing recently but this shit that i'm i'm really really excited to give you all of this and like i said releasing all this music i'm doing it like this for a reason because 
I don't feel like as an artist, I don't have a reputable catalog out there for people to listen to. When you think of like the biggest artists, they have a lot of music that you can choose from to listen to, whether it's before they got big or when they're big. And when I took a step back a few months ago, I realized like, oh shit, I'm not, I don't have anything. Like, so I just said, fuck it. I'm dropping everything. I'm dropping the random ones in between the, the official ones. I'm dropping remixes. I'm dropping instrumentals. Just, you know, like tomorrow's not promise type shit. And I know my sound is getting better and better and better and it's going to get better. So I also don't want to sit on this music. So I still have somewhat of that syndrome I had in my early music where I was just dropping it the second I make it. But the thing about good music is no matter when you listen to it, one day, one week, a month or a year later, it still has that <clears throat> that connection to you. And that's what a lot of my music is. All my official shit, that's how I feel with those. And I'm also not the same. Like I'm not like <clears throat> your typical musician. I I do really genuinely make every vibe. So every project is somewhat a different lane of the subgenre of hip hop, you know. The core of my shit is poetic shit. So lyricism is my main focus. But musically, <clears throat> you can hear where I'm going with the vibes and the melodies and how I'm expanding what I'm doing lyrically through the melodies and music and styles and flows and shit like that. I even even embarked on the shit as instrumentally like Deep, uh, Deep Stock, the project coming next month, that's the most experimental instrumentally one that I've done besides Crossroads because that's all acoustic and I did all the bass and the solos in that. Shout out to Angelo. He laid um, <clears throat> the acoustic guitar down in like two or three of them and I did everything else. So that was very experimental instrumentally, but I wanted to keep that as basic as possible. Just straight up um, because it was just acoustic. It was meant to be just as simple as I possibly could make it. So that was very experimental, but the next one, Low Stock, was the cynical route. So if you think about the title, Crossroads, I was at a point in my life where I realized that I was at a crossroads. So I had options of me. I could, I could have gone down and crashed. I could have gone down the brighter path, which I did choose. The next album, Low Stock, was a path that wasn't even offered to me at the crossroads. Low Stock was the cynical route, the cynical outlook on life. Meaning when you listen to Low Stock, it's lo-fi hip-hop. I'm just talking shit. I say like, pull up on a Mastodon on Adderall, then laugh at y'all. Like I, like I just get very lyrical and experimental in the sense of the subjects that I'm even talking about. Because at that point... When I looked at life, I was like, man, fuck this shit. This shit is not that serious. So there's the cynical route. So now, obviously, in February, lovey-dovey times and shit, I'm constantly thinking about my ex-girlfriends. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm a hopeless romantic, so I'm always thinking about my exes. And when I write a love song, the way that I metaphorically write them <clears throat> is like you can interpret it any way you want. If you ask me a specific song, it probably isn't about a girl at all. It might be about an object or a thing or a drug or someone else's story. But if I'm talking about a a relationship that like I want to work, that's like a dream one that's never going to be like a reality probably. It's like a combination of all my dream girls put in one. That's never going to be real. You know what I mean? We, we can't do that. What I realize with love and relationships is you have to take the, uh, embrace the flaws, not embrace the positives because it's easy to like embrace anybody's shiny moments. That's the easiest thing to do. You have to embrace their flaws. So if you love their flaws and you're cool with their flaws, then you and that person will be good for fucking ever. If that's a vice versa thing. But like I, I'm saying that because I always think about love. So whenever I'm making music, it's hard for me to steer away from something about love, whether it's a, a relationship of a friend or a, an, an ex-lover or a, a fantasy of one that you want, whatever that is. It's just always what I poetically like to paint. 
I used to, I, like, I do enjoy that. That's what low stock was. Low stock was the cynical route. So I do enjoy still just talking shit straight up. But I like painting pictures now. I like, I like showing you who I really, really, really am to the molecule. That's why a lot of my music now is self-reflective. It's inevitably reached that point. I've written so much BS <laughs> the past couple of years, just bars and bars, and that is to the point where, like, I've never talked about my fucking self. So that's what I realized a couple months ago as well. I was like, not only do I not have the catalog that I that I know I have out for people to hear, they don't even know how versatile at all I am artistically, mentally, everything. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so I, I haven't cared about views at all. I haven't even promoted the shit. I've just pretty much dropped it and shared it on my Instagram and Facebook a few times. That's all I've done with this shit because I have a plan. This is what I'm leading up to right now. So like I said, the next couple months I have another out, a couple more albums I'm going to drop. Now keep in mind, every week I'm releasing five instrumentals and one song on top of one remix. So I'm releasing, say, an album on average is eight songs. Eight, 16, 24 songs right there in three months. Now five beats per week, 5, 10, 15, 20, 2, 4, 6, 60 beats Fucking five, five fucking uh podcasts, two ciphers, and then the songs in between, one beat, one song a week. That's four, eight, twelve, and then one remix a week. That's twelve more. So as far as songs with my voice on it, I'm dropping every three months like sixty fucking songs. And then the beats every three months, I'm dropping like <laughs> 60 fucking beats. And then these, the podcast, to try and help people understand what I'm really doing. So, like I said, I'm, not, I, I'm releasing them, A, because tomorrow's not fucking promised. B, because it's fucking art. It doesn't matter. It's painted. It is what it is. A lot of this shit otherwise is just going to sit in my computer, so why not the fuck drop it? See, people don't know how versatile I am or who I am or what I am, so I realized I, I still need to paint that picture. D, the shit's fucking good. <laughs> like, the shit is fucking good. Like, I'm not a, I, I try to kill my ego so fucking much, but that doesn't mean I don't know how talented and, and good this shit is, you know? For what it's worth, for what I'm doing, how I'm doing this shit, it's fucking amazing. So that's another thing. I want to get this shit out now because I know where I'm at this time next year. My equipment's going to be leveled up. Everything about me is going to be a complete... I'm going to be a completely different person. By summertime, I'm going to be viewed as a different person just because of how I picked my fucking self up. And that's one of the things that's motivating me is like, I know I can do this. I've done the easy shit my whole fucking life, you know? I've done the easy way out my whole life. So that's why I challenge myself by working out, discipline, challenge myself. Like, And when you set yourself on a thing, like I have to release something every Monday, which is when I release five instrumentals and a, and a, and a song or a remix. I release the song or the remix Monday and, the, and another song or remix by Wednesday. So every Monday and Wednesday, I usually release something. And then Thursday or Friday, I drop the podcast if I have one. But, and the album is just whenever the first or, or something of that month is, or just whenever I feel like it. But, um, but that's what I'm saying. When, when you set yourself on a schedule, like every Monday I have to release this music, that's when you realize, oh shit, it's already Monday again. It's already Monday again. Yo, it's already been three fucking months. And now I look back like, yo, I did it. I'm doing it. And I would like to say, like, without any promotion, like, my views have shot the fuck up. Not from anybody that already has been watching me. Like, just from random shit that I have no control over, the algorithm or whatever that is. Just because I'm consistently dropping shit. And since I'm all over the place, as far as vibes go... I'm getting those sections of people that I've always been looking for. Like, finally, because... I make this vibe because I want to hang out with these people. 
And I make this vibe because I want to hang out with those people. And I make that vibe because I want to hang out with them people. And I put it together because I want all these people to hang out together. That's why I do the shit. So now that, like, I'm not doing, and and I'm, I'm, like, so fucking, like, happy and proud of myself. But there are those, I still have those moments every day. Like, why am I even doing this? Like, because obviously the views aren't at what I want. Nothing's, and this is the thing I'm realizing too. Nothing is ever going to satisfy me. And I think that's a thing that all humans deal with. Like, I'm never going to be satisfied with views. I'll never be satisfied with awards or nominations. That's what I'm learning right now, which is driving my work ethic to just do even more in a way. It's such a weird, addictive thing. Like, I'm learning how to turn that binge personality I had where I just go hard in moments to a consistent overlay of everything, you know, instead of having a big thing and burn myself out for a few days, I can keep myself going steady, like stronger, consistently longer, you know, I'm, I'm like quadrupling my work ethic right now just by doing it like this. So yeah, that's the music shit. Not to mention my fucking band. I haven't really talked about my band on here. I'm going to get Tom on here. I'm going to get Dara. Maybe I can get Ty to do a podcast. Maybe I can get all fucking three of them to do one with me. Um, but yeah, my band, we're, we're fucking good. Bands are weird, dude. Bands are not like rap, you know, like I'm the drummer. So, and I'm the new, the last member I've been in the band for about three years now. And also I don't feel like talking about the scenes of hip hop and rock right now, but it's, it's evident in the mainstream. Like we haven't heard of a big rock band in like 10, 15 years, you know, like not like. We don't. Ha- There's no generational Chili Peppers or Incubus or any anything like that for this generation. It's just all rap. That being said, that's how venues are looking at shit. But that's not what I want to talk about. I just want to talk about my band. So, um, and being in a band. Being in a band is not like rap because rapping you're doing your own thing. But a lot of rappers still have to go to a studio. You still have to talk to producers and engineers and and you have to network in the sense you still need other quote unquote instrumentalists. Like you need an engineer to mix your shit down. That's something I couldn't deal with. I needed to be able to make music whenever I fucking wanted, which is why I can not even do what I'm doing right now. I locked myself in. It goes back to that Kanye song. I locked myself in a room for three summers. I deserve to do these numbers. Like, that's exactly the type of time I'm on right now. I already did the two summer show. Or no, like three. Straight up. This That shit's done. I'm ready. That's what I'm saying. But, um... But yeah, dude, as a rapper, you still have to do a lot of things. So I'm fortunate that I fucking took the time to do the shit myself because... I wouldn't have the catalog that I just talked about if I didn't do all this shit by myself, mixing and mastering and engineering. But with the band, you can't just record like that. Like, I could record acoustically pretty easily, but recording a drummer, you need fucking eight microphones, you know? Three tom mics, two on the kick, two on the snare, two overhead, a hi-hat, like... It's a lot of fucking mics. It's a lot of shit. We recorded our first album together, but we had to do it one by one. I was the newest member, but just playing with a click. Like, I didn't have the music to play with. I was, it was a, that's all I played with as a drummer. And then they layered it over top of that. So it was cool, but like, we have such a good feel when we play together. So we want to, for our next album, we'll probably make it an EP. We have like two albums worth of music ready after we've had it for two years, but like I'm about to say, it's, it's, it's tough being in a band because recording sessions are way different. It's about, it runs you in a real big studio, about 50 an hour to get a session just for a rapper. So with bands, it's not the same. You have a lot of shit you got to do, like setting up the drums takes time into that you know you have to run the sound 
all that shit, you know, it's just so fucking much more. So it's like a lot more convenient for the DJ or the rapper nowadays, as far as money goes. And it's a lot more convenient for the single superstar. When you look at like NSYNC to Justin Timberlake, uh, Destiny's Child to fucking Beyonce, you know, the soup, the, the solo superstar always seems to be easier to market for the ba- major companies. But then you have bands like the fucking Foo Fighters who have been doing this shit forever and they just keep rein- reinventing themselves and doing things that keep them popping, you know? So I- I'm not complaining at all in the sense. I'm just saying like being in a band nowadays is not what you think it is, you know? It's fucking hard, dude. It's hard being a musician in general. But being, because rapping is, like I, like I said, it's pretty fucking easy. Like, I can just go rap anywhere. I could just put on a beat. I could have some fucking beatbox on a subway train. You know, like, I could rap and do that anywhere. As a drummer, I can't fucking bring my drums everywhere. And I'm not banging on fucking paint cans, yo. That's what I'm not about to fucking do. I'm not that musically artistic. <laughs> to bang on some paint cans. Fucking, um... But yeah, it's like, it's, it's way different th- than that. And I want to be in a band because like I said, I want to connect with different kinds of people. A lot of people uh, gravitate to the music that they listen to. So if I'm available to as many genres as possible, then I'm available to as many open minds and different thought processes as possible. And when I'm around different people that I've never been around and styles and shit, I'm learning and I just want to embrace what everyone has to offer. And that's a beautiful thing about music. Music is the one healing thing that brings people together. So <clears throat> if whether you like this or that genre or not, you cannot deny greatness. And I've seen it every show that I throw. I mix the genres at my shows. And I mix the talent <clears throat> and the subgenres and all of that. But it's a different type of quote-unquote showcase because no one leaves because they're shocked by every single act that they see it's different when you see when you go to a show and everyone's corny and doesn't matter if they're the same genre or not it's like you're bleeding your ears out but when you see different genres come together and there's different people dress differently look differently smell different you know like it's 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 a beautiful fucking thing because they all mosh together. They all do that shit, you know? That's my fucking final goal is to get that on a grand scale and make that shit possible. Imagine like a big ass festival like with my my band and a bunch of other different genre bands, jam bands, blues bands, punk bands, reggae, and then me as a rapper with a bunch of different genres of rappers. Like, and then DJs, different genre DJs, like, that festival would be fucking amazing. They're doing it right now, but, like, these mainstream, it's such a small door to get in, especially as a band. Like, I'm not complaining, like I said, I'm just saying, like, this shit is difficult. So, now add in the fact that you're an entity with three, potentially four or five other people, you know? So, like, the band usually has a central sound or vibe, you know, but every person is an individual, you know. I don't listen to music at all. I make so much music, I don't. But Dara listens to this music, Tom listens to that music, and Todd, you know, they generally listen to the same stuff, but they're all over the place. Now, carry that into what we watch, the sports we do, the food we eat, the things we find funny. You know, we're all so different. So that's why bringing music together in bands is beautiful. But that's another difficult thing. Because we butt heads and we're in this spot where there, where there is no scene for bands. So in order to get paid, we have to do like 30 to 50% cover songs if we do that. Which we've only done a few times. And it, the pay is really good when you do that. But it's like, it's soul crushing as, an, as a band. And... I hear advice from um, the great Taylor Hawkins, the drummer of the Foo Fighters. He was the drummer of Alanis Morissette, saying, if you want to start a band, learn a shit ton of cover songs. Like, that's the first thing he says, just so you can stay gigging and stay playing. So I under- we're not stubborn in the sense of that anymore. Like I said, I've only been in the band for three years, so 
being a, a rapper then to be, to being in a band is a very different transition to understanding what's what's what and how to move as a collective with 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 that idea you know what i mean so the last thing we want to do is get in a disagreement about a fucking cover song that doesn't fucking matter at the end of the day you know and i'm i'm sure so many fucking bands go through this so we finally came to the conclusion like fuck it let's just write down let's just write them down all like I wrote down a list of 75 the other day. I even made a YouTube playlist with those songs. So I want, I'm going to have every artist choose 20 of the favorite cover songs type shit. And then same with me. And then we'll, out of those 20, whichever match up will be the ones that we cover. And I also want to mash shit, but like mesh, mesh covers together like we all do. It's just a different creative way. But what I'm saying is as a band, like as a rapper, could you imagine me? Going out for and eighty percent of my set, I have to rap other rapper songs. Could you imagine? <laughs> Yo, like as a like imagine bugs to the stage, and I start a song, set with my song, and then I go into like a Drake song, and then a fucking Lil Wayne song, and then a Jay Z song. Like imagine. <laughs> But that's uh, that's okay with rock music though. Like, and I understand because understand I understand because they're playing the instruments. That's one thing. But bro, to make to make it so a place in Atlantic City you have to basically cover to even play anywhere. That's death to the genre. And another thing that's death to the genre are the major bands going on these major tours every now and then. Allowing labels to use bands that are already still there, like it's a festival. Y'all got time, yo. Throw that city that you're in. Throw do have some of your homies do some groundwork. Like yo, what's some dope bands out here? Dope bands that don't have thirty k fake followers. Shit like that. You know what I mean? Like there's there's ways to keep that scene and genre pumping with blood and keep that heart alive. You know, but that genre rock is just long gone and you see in rap how the genres literally went through the same exact transitions rock did like they had the weird dress phase the hair phase in the 80s you got the fucking early thousands you got the beginning funk more funky dance stuff which is in the early 80s of rap when it first started then you got the fucking, uh, obviously you all see the emo phase right now, how rock went to the emo phase, and guess what? Emo was like the last phase of rock. So if that's the case, we're at the last phase of hip-hop right now. And if that's the case, then that means it's going to go full circle uh, to what it started with. The simple shit. The real instruments, the few things that, the things that are not being looked at right now. Everything obviously goes in its transitions and full circle type shit, but, but with the internet and like, you got to think about music <clears throat> in the sixties, people only had like certain shit that they could listen to because of albums and shit. Think about this. Like 50, like 60 years ago, people only had select shit to listen to. Same with the radio. In the 90s, that's when CDs came. 80s, I think CDs came. 80s was still vinyl, I think. Around 90s, when the CDs came, it got different. It, there was like a thing about getting vinyls and CDs. There was a whole process behind finding a musician that wasn't known and that was just in the record store. And that's why people had a sense of pride finding the artist. Once Napster hit or whatever, where they stole all the, stole the music, that completely changed the music industry. Not saying it wasn't bad before as far as people getting fucked by deals, but it changed everything. You know, people could just download music. People could just upload music. So it, it, it not only did it flood it with professional music that has been out for decades for people to just torrent, now it's being uploaded with new people like, oh shit, I can just do this, you know, on my own. So it's it's became a big ass cesspool and numbers game of views. And that's where we're at right now. So the talent, like there's obviously talent sprinkled in there. Every generation, there's been some bullshit music that was popular. That's not what I'm saying. It's like it's kind of the same as it ever was In the set, if you want to get trippy about it. But I'm talking about the transition of where music 
is because when you go from the bands and how in the 90s to 2000s it got slightly more electronic and then 2010s all electronic, we're in 2020 now and you can kind of see the curve coming back to talent. Like you want to see someone playing an instrument. You want to see someone actually sing without autotune. And I, I love autotune. Like I use it on a lot of my songs just because I love the effect of it. I've, I've been a fan of it since fucking Cher with Do You Believe in Love After Love. <laughs> Life After Love. I always fuck that up. But you can hear that. And I think when you look at rock music where the, the last mainstream version of it was, it was emo. It was that emo scene in like 2008, nine. 10 years later, that's exactly where rap is now. It's been here for like, it's been there for like three years, two years. So you got to think everything takes its curve like three to four years. So like anybody who comes out with that sound now is like, oh. And that's not saying rock music didn't sound the same. Every genre of rock music and bands had those formats and um, arrangements, you know, a lot of the genres sound the same. That's what gets exciting. Who's going to push the envelope? Who's going to envelope envelope? Who's going to expand the genre? Who's going to connect that genre with this one that makes a new genre? You know, who's going to invent a whole new fucking instrument? You know, whose voice is just that unique that if anyone else sang it, it wouldn't have gotten popular. You know, that's, that's like, the only evolution music can really take. I don't see a new genre per se coming. I only see it flipping back to like, dude, we're bored of seeing corny shit. And now with us being able to choose so much what we listen to, like the radio, my band got played on the radio like five months ago, bro. 15 years ago, if that happened, we would be gone right now. Straight up. We would be gone. That would, that would have been a different thing for us to categorize like capitalize on because at 15 years ago everyone was on the radio they weren't on their iPhones like so that moment that happened six months ago is an accolade every fucking band and musician is waiting for like oh dude we got played on the radio you know and it was amazing but it didn't feel like it should have you know and that's not because of the genre that's because of where music is digitally now online so it felt amazing like dude like we we were played on the radio you know like we're good enough you know we we've always known that that's not the issue the thing is trying to figure out the fucking math behind everything else like without quote unquote selling your soul and doing things for clout like a skit or a goofy like some shit like that's a that's okay but but a lot of a, a lot of these rappers do a lot of shit for clout. That's like a distasteful thing. And you obviously see that trend. And in that genre, a lot of people bring each other down. Rock music, people don't bring each other down. They just don't support each other. They Back in the day when they were coming up, they did. The little scenes and pockets, they supported each other. That's why those genres blossomed. But as a whole, when all those big bands got on... They weren't fucking giving a shit about any other band because they had their own problems. Bands are fuck. It's hard to be in a fucking band, dude. Like when when you're going through it with your band, the last thing you want to fucking or an album or whatever you're working on or focused on, the last thing you give a fuck about is another band. So I understand that, but I have an obligation as who I am right now as Bugs to do some shit for the younger artists right now. So how can these guys not feel obligated to do something for? The hungry ass, lively, pulsing bands that there's just nowhere to go, you know? Like, and the only thing is, like, we would we, not thinking too much, but if we just all packed up in a van and went somewhere like Tennessee or just went on the road and booked places, like, I'm sure we could fucking do that. But, and booking places and doing shit, but it's not like. It's not like it was back in the day. It would, like I said, it wouldn't have the effect. Just like us being on the radio didn't have the effect today. Us going on the road just blindly like that. Not blindly. Like I said, we could plan out, say, a 12-city a sit, sit, tour, right? Hit six of them on the way there, six of them on the way back or something. Make it a five-day, like a two-week thing. That's not hard to do. 
but what is that is that really going to be worth it at the end of the day because you got to think of the money that we would have to invest to do that some of the venues would want a down payment we're going to these places where no one knows who we are so we don't have a guarantee of making money at the door for them or us to solidify even breaking even on the travel so the only way we could do it is by getting booked by these places if we send them an inquire of our music, but a lot of venues don't just do that. You know what I mean? A lot of venues aren't just paying out unless it's a city like strictly like where did I go for South by Southwest? Like that plays that shit. I mean, I'm in Jersey right now, so I'm also speaking from a perspective of no scene, nothing at all. Any scene that happened out here was slightly because of me. And it's because I want to connect shit. But then when you realize that there's like, there's just no venues, it's not even the artists, the ciphers works because I got people in random locations. We didn't have a set spot for those ciphers. Every town the cipher was in, I went to like the most popular outside spot, which had issues with wind and shit. But if you want to throw a show, we can't just throw a show at the fucking park. You know, you need a permit, you need all that extra shit. And that's, and then you need sound and, you know, that's different throwing a show so throwing house parties is easy that's that's kind of where like a lot of people are pointing my pointing the fingers to for rock like just throw some house parties and that's kind of might what i be what i boil it down to for now just throwing big like 50 capacity house parties just with like three rock bands and we just hang out just play music but like that's even like as a musician, that is the fulfillment. That's what you, you just want to play. It doesn't matter for how many people. That is the fulfillment. But I but we're all lying to you if we say we don't want the bigger thing, that we don't want to play in front of 20,000 people, 50,000 people, 100,000, that we don't want that, you know? So we obviously have the passion and the motivation to keep doing this shit, but excuse me, when you study this shit like I do and look at it from the outside and see like what everyone is doing not just this specific band not just this lead guitarist or this guy or this girl you know or this label not any of that i'm looking at all of it you know back to the 70s 60s 50s how it all transitioned what legal contract shit like that everything that happened you know like i'm a very fucking in tune with with everything in the music industry of how it transitioned. That being said, I should be able to like get in it very easily per se, right? But I'm more of the artist. You can like I just like painting because I like painting. I do want the money at the end of the day too. So like if you're fucking if you studied all bets ever, how how the odds went, how this one won and this one lost, you could still lose all your future bets potentially. Doesn't matter how much you studied of shit. Doesn't matter even how much you did shit or how much you how much you do do it. There's always that potential of failing, of not getting it. That's where the artistry comes in and just just painting to paint. The best art comes out like that when I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to show you who I am. That's when the real shit comes out. So when like, like I'm saying, it's a, it's a weird paradox because I want the money. I want the success. I, I want to go on radio shows and talk. Some musicians don't want that. Some artists don't want that. They don't want any of, and I don't, I'm not talking about fame. I don't want paparazzi shit. I want to be, I, I want to be like Method Man. <laughs> I want to be able, I want to be noticed everywhere and shown love, but not fucked with. Like, I want to be able to go wherever I am and be who I am. A lot of celebrities don't have that luxury. So when I say I want it all, I don't really necessarily want the celebrity part. But with how my music is, that's inevitable, you know? And how you use that is a thing. And what I mean by cloud is I could be the cockiest motherfucker. 
That's so easy. I could be the biggest dickhead. I could talk all the shit. I could tag this person, talk mad shit on him. I could do that. I could just start dissing people. I could do all that shit just to get traction. But that's not, that's not okay. Like spiritually, you know, it's not, not only not me and the people who do that, it's not them. They're, it's for a false sense of security. Like, like a few months ago, I wasn't okay because I didn't understand what the point of life was after losing a few of my, my homies. So like, it wasn't depression based off of like, oh, I'm overweight or I'm drinking too much or like, no, like I was really trying to fucking understand what life is. And I just found, realized, you just got to fucking wake up and do this shit every fucking day. But that doesn't stop the fact, like I say, the doubts that inevitably come in my head, the, the things that I inevitably think about. It's, it's so hard to filter that shit out. Just like I said, I, I blocked and deleted everybody on social media that posts negative shit. But I still see negative shit every time I go on there. I'm still blocking to this day. It's been like two, three months. I block like five people a day. And it's people I know, people I hang out with, like <laughs> people I talk like like I'm friends with, like that I love. But I'm not looking at a beaten a picture of a beaten dog, bro. Like I don't want to see none of that shit. Cause my brain already takes me on so much shit. Like then I think this is the problem with everybody is that we have this ego <clears throat> and we wait for other people to kill it. And like, while you're rapping and all, yeah, you can have an ego. When you're a musician, when you're an artist, whatever you're doing, sports, boxing, you can, dude, ego all day. But the second it's just this, where we're just sitting and talking and and there's an ego, that makes people want to fucking get killed. Like, that makes people want to fucking hurt you. And that's just some real shit, like... So if you don't kill your own ego, other people will, whether it's verbally, physically, whatever it is. So it's like, by killing your own ego, you're protecting yourself and everyone else. You know, you're not getting other people involved in your fucking own battle. Because we all go through that shit. Whatever we're thinking about. But, um... What I want to say is, though, like, being in a band, it's so fucking fun because we can communicate with instruments, but I want to be successful. I want to go on the road. I want to be on tour. Like, I don't ever want to be home. I want to live on the tour bus. I, I belong there. I'll be in better shape on the road. I've already tested it out a few times, like, South by Southwest and a few other things where I was gone for, like, a week. Dude, I got fucking ripped. And I was healthy. I had energy. I wasn't like, you know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't like I wasn't eating. I was fucking eating good. But like I belong on the fucking road. So when you break down time though, when you, like I said earlier, when you just drop everything every Monday, you realize like, oh shit, it's already been three months. And when you're doing it week by week like that, it stacks and stacks up. And then you look back like, Damn, I've been in the band for two and a half years. Like, what are we doing? You know, like, <clears throat> damn, I've been, I've with the band. I've only, perf I've only been performing for three years too. Like when I joined the band, they came to my first rap show. So it's only been a three year thing that I've been a real artist. Remember, I said I found my sound two and a half years ago. About that's when I became a real quote unquote artist in two thousand eighteen. Before that, I was just a cypher rapper guy who had some random videos online. You know, I didn't even consider myself a musician until two, three years ago. So that says a lot, but obviously in this time, I've done a shit ton of research the past four or five years on all this shit, the industry and where shit is and like, and like, <clears throat> unless we go do some drastic shit, I only see it turning back to talent, which is where we're at. Like, we have the talent. We have the longevity. We have the material. We have all of it. I'm talking about my band and me and a lot of people that I know. So, like, I just really hope it takes a turn for 
consciousness and people as a whole to stop fucking giving a fuck about the clickbait. Because lo- everything's clickbait, bro. Everyone posts their happy shit. That's why I'm posting this. Like, I want people to know, like, when I wasn't okay, where I was okay, how I handled it, how I grew through it. Like, I'm not a fucking... None of us are perfect. So when people post all this shit all day, it's like giving you a false false sense of reality and what your world is. And it's just... Mentally all around, it's not okay, yo. It's just, like, it's really fucked. And the way that we're trying to navigate this shit is is weird. Like, we don't even know how to navigate this shit. So we're doing the best we can, but we're not doing too fucking good, yo. <laughs> but, um... Fucking, uh... At about, at about an hour, yo. Fucking... I went in about the music. There's a lot more I can say about it, but I'll save some more about, um about music for when I have another musician in here and we'll talk about the industry and go more in depth and elaborate on some things I didn't talk about. But um other thing I wanted to say is I have a I have a comedy page, yo. <laughs> so this is great. I like 6 months ago I been I watch podcasts all day. I think when I'm working out, cooking and doing shit when I'm not making music. And I listen to a lot of like Joe Rogan, obviously, Chris D'Elia, Joey Diaz, Bobby Lee, fucking all those goofballs. Eric Griffin, of course. I fucking love Eric Griffin. And uh <laughs> and Chris D'Elia and this shit, he goes like he makes these weird ass sounds like ah <laughs> like so like, six months ago, I was like, fuck it, I'm going to screen record every time he does that. And in that specific episode, he did it, like, 20 more fucking times. So, like, I only needed, like, a few more in the next episode, and I compiled all those sounds in one minute. And I called it a minute of a flabbergasted Crystalia. I posted number nine a couple days ago, so there's nine fucking minutes of Crystalia. But, yo, he fucking reposted part seven, I think it was, to his Instagram. Like, so one night I put, he likes a lot of them, actually. Like, so Chris D'Elia likes a lot of them. Fucking, and, because, like I said, I, that was number seven. So I woke up in the middle of the night one night, and I was like, 100-something, like, likes or something. Like, what's that? Like, no, I said, like, 300 likes or something. And I was like, oh, shit, like, did he repost it? And I, and I wasn't tagged or nothing, so I was confused. And then I went to his fucking page, and he reposted it on his fucking story, dude. So, like... Like I said, with the music shit, I've I've had shit go viral before on YouTube, like the ciphers back in the day, like before viral was a thing. I was able to see what real clout is, not what uh, paying for this person to repost it or paying this site to post your or this blog or like what a lot of rappers get caught up in, which is a, another thing I pride myself on. I've never paid for any promotion, zero dollars. Everything has just been... Word of mouth or friend, but a lot of rappers pay for SoundCloud plays. They pay for followers. They pay for blog write-ups. They pay for all these things that artists shouldn't be paying for. Like, a motherfucker should be writing a blog about this artist because he's fucking dope. That's why. Not because he's fucking paid you 200 bucks. That's fucking corny, bro. To get posted on a site that's not even getting guaranteed traffic. It's fucking weird. But um, but when he posted that, I just watched the numbers. I was like, because when I went to sleep, it had like 300 views. Because the Chris D'Elia ones, like, I, I, I post a lot of goofy shit. It's at Just Laugh Dude. Spelled Dude, D-O-O-D. On Instagram. But um, but when he reposted, I was like, oh shit. Like, every hour it went up like 2,000 views and like 200 likes. So like, and obviously, you know, it stays on Instagram story for 24 hours. So... I just tri- I kept uh, track of it for the for the whole the whole day and dude like it was a consistent steady, you know when those people saw what he posted they clicked it type shit you know and then those people tagged people and they shared it and Cristalia helped the baby dude that was fucking fire bro like like I said six months ago I only did it because it's fucking funny. When I, like I was just like gonna start doing goofy shit just cause as far as skits I have some skits on there. Um, all the music that you hear over goofy videos is my music. So like, 
There's one where his kid's riding a horse and a horse rams him into the car. And it's my music in the background. Like, get the fuck. I'm screaming and shit. But <laughs> I do that for all my shit. So, like, that's how I put my touch on it. Unless it's my skit or something that I compiled together, I'll put my music over the fail or whatever's happening to make it mine. But yeah, I do that. I did that goofy shit just because, you know, just because fuck it. Like, well, what's the point? I watch this goofy shit. I don't think people are catching the goofy shit that I am. So I'm gonna put it together. And dude, it's fucking Crystalia saw it. Like, that's some shit. That's some fucking shit. Same thing with Eric Griffin, dude. Like, I fucking I'm a huge fan of workaholics. I loved his character. I love his stand up after that. So the second I saw he started a podcast, the first episode, I was like, yes, this guy's the shit. And he was singing. And I was like, that was like a year ago. And I that's when I realized like I have a lot of goofy fucking beats that I produce. Like they would be perfect for him to sing over or something. So I sent him a beat one day, a fucking random dance beat, and he fucking used it on one of his podcasts on the intro. And that was fucking epic. And then uh, obviously I'm just a fan. I just watched the shit. He just starts doing these woo-woos and shit when he's singing in his intro. Everybody knows the woo-woos. So I made a beat with the woo-woo melody. The bass line was... Like it was, it was that exact melody. So when I sent him that beat, he fucking always does live chat, like chats for when he streams his video games and Call of Duty and shit. He played that beat and fucking rapped on it. On one of his episodes and then started this thing called the chat rap, which now he raps every time he streams. <laughs> and that started because of the extra beat I sent him, which is just some random shit. I'm positive he doesn't know that I'm like a cypher rapper. I'm sure he hasn't looked at my YouTube to see like, oh, this kid's just actually a musician. And he just sent me some some of his goofy shit because I'm goofy, you know. So like, well, oh, dude, if I could one day get on the Eric Griffin podcast, that'd be fucking crazy. Because, again, like, a couple months ago, like, that's the thing. Like, these motherfuckers who are doing these podcasts, they have no idea how much they've helped me. Just as far as convos go, as far as just relaxing me when I have nothing because TV shows, movies, all that's just so programmed, you know? You need real shit. That's why podcasts are so prominent right now. That's why they're successful. You need the real shit. People want to, besides all the art, know you you know, and dude, that would just be so fucking crazy if, if me and me and Eric ever had a podcast together, but, but it's, it really helped me in those times. And I let him know that, you know, like we have a dialogue on Instagram and shit. So when he, like, he, he just randomly hit me up like, yo, yo, like, and when I scrolled up, I forgot I had told him I was going to send him beats and I thought I sent the shit, but I never sent them. So I sent him more beats. He wanted more beats for, like, chat raps in the future. So that's just because of the dialogue, you know? And that's, like, that was when I, I got a chance to let him know. Like, hey, I just want to let you know, dude. Like, you, you're really helping me through a rough time in my life. Like, I was at the lowest part uh, a few months ago. Like, think about it, bro. Think about being at the lowest part in your life for nothing else but what life is. Like, like what's the point? What is this weird shit? This shit is dumb you know fuck it i'm gonna write a verse about it i wrote my like the best verse ever this is two months ago like i I forgot about it now that i'm telling the story i forgot about that fucking song that's the my best verse i ever wrote but i've been making shit since then who knows and like i just closed the laptop i was like i feel so much better right now went on my ipad eric griffin just dropped the podcast fuck yeah clicked on it First three seconds, it's my beat. I was like, what the fuck? Like, that's what life is? Like, this this crazy, awesome shit along with this crazy, terrible, end of the world shit? Like, that's what this is? That's what I've been trying to figure out the past couple months and... I think I did. I think it's just fucking just doing it. Just go. Just fucking do it. While you're here, the point is, just go. That's why I'm just doing these this content. Like, dude, when I'm gone one day, this podcast right here, this is going to help a lot of people. I already fucking know it. 
And I encourage a lot of people to do shit like this because tomorrow's not promised. Like, I was thinking, do I write a diary? Do I write a will? Like, no, what the fuck am I talking about? Just fucking talk. I want y'all to know who I really am and, like, what my... What's that saying? The roadway to hell is paved with good intentions. I don't really care about my intentions being known because anything can go... It can go either way with intentions. Now, like, when I've, I've been breaking a lot of different words down differently... I just want y'all to know, like, who I am. Not even what my intentions are. Because if I'm able to carry out this legacy that I want to fulfill, you'll be able to look back at these and use this as a timeline as who I was there. You know? That's kind of what the music does, but a lot of the music and beats I've been releasing, some of them are from five, four years ago. You know? Some of the music I'm releasing is from... A long fucking time ago, right now. Those are the random drops. But the timeline of the of these will keep keep in perspective of what's going on with all that other shit. But I do have some more I want to talk about, but I I can't believe I just rambled on like that. So I'm gonna save it for another one, yo. I love y'all. Do what you fucking do, yo. The Just Laugh Dude page, like, that shit is so crazy. Like I said, like, I I beat myself up every day still. Like, what am I doing this for? What's the point? And then some shit with Eric, like, that with Eric Griffin happens. And then Chris D'Elia reposts it. And then, you know, so, and I haven't even scratched the surface musically when I think about it like that. <laughs> like, so, I'm going to get all this music out, all these albums up until about May or June. Once June hits, I will have videos every month. One official music video every month. So continuing for the rest of the year, I'm dropping an album or EP every month. <clears throat> Still staying with the beats. I'm doing that shit till I run out. And once I run out of shit that I don't have stocked up right now, that's when all that stops. That's when you can expect some some shit. Some shit. Because all this music's amazing, but I know I'm going to level up in a couple months, so... Like on a on a crazy level, on a lyrical level, like my writing is getting so much better. It's it's insane. I'm still getting better every day. So hopefully I can get that songwriter deal or some shit so I can keep making my own shit at the same time. That'd be fucking facts. <laughs> I love y'all. I'll talk to y'all soon.